the first night we hung out after I wouldn't sell him the record, I think it was like that night, we got all fucked up and we were listening. He was like, he was turning me on to Beef Art and shit. And I, I, I'd known Beef Art, but he really turned me on to like Doc at the radar station. And I was like, uh. and so we're in the middle of this. And I go, hey man, all right, listen, I, I probably should get going. Uh, what are you up to tomorrow? And he's like, he's like, I got to take a final uh, in geology. And I was just like, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> And he he wound up flunking out of school, because uh, I, I was just like, uh, "You're taking a final, you know?" Like everybody else was freaking out and studying, and he was so not into geology. Hello, I'm Matt Sweeney, and this is the Matador Revisionist History Podcast. Today, we're joined by the great Michael Gibbons of the Great Bardo Pond. Uh, and friend of Bardo Pond and founder of Carbon Records, Joe Tunis. Bardo Pond is releasing a couple of crucial reissues to their 90s catalog, and oh my God, what a catalog it is. Seriously. Set and setting for the album's 25th anniversary and a double LP of rarities titled Melt Away. Both of these are in stores and on streaming services today. Go check them and have your mind melted. This chat was really exciting because uh, Bardo Pond is one of the most special sounding bands uh, that I've ever heard. They sound like uh, music is, they sound like they're playing music for the first time and they, and at the same time they sound exactly like they know what they're doing. Um, and it's so, you know, they're, they're magical and, and earthy and, uh, and stunning. Uh, and I was lucky enough as a youngster to, uh, to, I think maybe take them on one of their first, tours outside of philly um with my band chavez uh check this out if you just want to hear the coolest origin story of of a band and why a band does what they do and how a band came to get their sound it's in here uh on matador revisionist history bardo pond michael gibbons episode check it out when did Bart Upon take off and start going over to Europe and stuff? Because again, like like we we were all playing like pretty early on, as far as yes. you guys being an active band, right? We you know it was a while. We didn't go over there till you know, I think like like two thousand. You know, it was really? Like, uh, you know, well, two, like two thousand one somewhere. Like after I remember like after nine eleven. Like at, like we went started going to Europe more often. You know, we didn't go that much like the first few records. Who were you playing with, and how did it like? How did it vibe? You know, we were like playing. It was cool. We were playing. Who did we play with in those early days? A lot of places. You know, we were the headliner, so mm. you know, it was a lot of local dudes that we played with. We didn't tour look with anybody. You know, we later we played with Mogwai when we went, went over. There okay, all right. Okay, so it was, was a lot of fun, and um, yeah, like. Was there any freaky, f- freaky skull flowery? connect or I, anything like I, that there or? was like i think the dudes from um fiber cathedral orchestra we played with a gig you know like in leeds we played with the guys from not that not fiber cathedral but we played with the guys from it that was really cool yeah we played with a lot of really cool bands a lot of a lot of, a lot of strange like more experimental rock bands right uh i love skullflower we never played with them i would have loved to play with them we played with them in a festival once you put me onto them. I remember back in the day. Oh, I was cool! Like, this is, I was like, "This is fucked." <laughs> it's fucked up. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so good. They, they do so many different things. I was just listening to them actually the other day. Yeah, it's like uh, I think the work is called Transformer or something. It's a, yeah, they're, they're, I love that. Dude, that guy's a freaky cool dude. Joe, how did you vector with Bardo Pond? Oof! Uh, bought a seven inch from Parasol. Remember Parasol? That mail order out of the. Mm, I remember the name. It's out of like Chicago area. They'd send you a trifold, you know, stapled in the mail every two weeks with, like, three-point font. And I, like, read this thing. I'm like, oh, Bardo Pond, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Got that. Yeah, it was on, what, Compulsive? The Dragonfly 7-inch? Yes, yes. Right? I think so. And, uh, yeah. yeah, blew me away. I, You know, so I always describe uh, that Dragonfly in particular, but, like, Joe's drumming would make me feel drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah or high and i don't smoke and it would yeah, like yeah. make me feel like kind of out of it yeah it would like warble the way he yes just, you yes. know his drumming just uh, kind of i don't know it's like weird pulse or something yeah um yeah so i got into that and then uh picked up what was after that like uh big laughing jim and 
Buffalo Varies and stuff. And then you guys came up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lapsed might have been the first one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe uh, was still in the band. I think I remember we played talking Amanita. And... We played at, at when Amanita played. To, to oh, was played Amanita? There too. Yeah. Yeah. I remember playing some Amanita songs up there. There's one great uh, video, the YouTube video of us playing like um, Yellow Turban at the Bug Jar. What was that place called? The... Yeah, the Bug Jar. Bug Jar. Oh, it's yeah, probably yeah. my video. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking yeah, for that probably tape. Your video. I can't find that tape. Yeah. <laughs> and it was that so that was like after Amanita. So we did play we played we went up there and played there like pretty early on. I'd love to go yeah. up there, man. That fucking yeah. that is a great town. I remember those both both those shows, like after the second show, you you were just like, This is the fucking best room. It's a really small it's room. It's so great. Yes. I went up to Toronto. You guys are doing that tour at Mogwai. Oh I yeah. Saw you there at some big joint and it was annoying because mm-hmm. everyone was talking during your set. <laughs> uh and then I happened to be in Austin, Texas on a road trip with my partner and you guys are playing there and I walked up to you and you're like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> um, yeah, it was like out of nowhere. Um, I think I'm trying to think, I think you play with like ST 37 maybe or something. It was like one of the, Oh, for sure. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Awesome we always play with them, bands. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it must have been, I got out of school. I was at the Art, Art, Art Institute of Chicago for paint, studying painting. Oh, I didn't know and that. I was like, John and I started jamming when we were little kids. Like, we would always be playing, like, bongos and just doing stuff and fucking around singing. We didn't actually, none, we never knew how to play guitar or actually play anything, but we would always record weird shit, like, experimental oh, cool. funny shit. Yeah, Where'd so, uh, in Ocean City, New Jersey. You know, we grew oh, up yeah. in Philadelphia. We are both born in Philly, and then we... we my parents moved down to Ocean City, New Jersey. So, Did you go to um, Luigi's a lot? Uh, Luigi's, yeah, yeah. We went to Luigi's. Mac I used to go Mac there every goes. summer. Yeah. John and I so did that. So what happened was I was in the Art Institute of Chicago, and I started. And Clint and I had met before I went to school in, uh, out there. I was I, when I right when I got out of high school, I moved to California to get residency and go to school out there and try to you know just have my college paid for out there. And I met Clint when I was living in Morning Glory, and he was like a uh, he was coming up to get this Lester Bowie record at this record store I was working at, and uh, and. Uh, I, it was a record that I kind of wanted to steal from the stash, you know, of the store, and uh, but I never got around to putting that away. I had so many other ones that I was trying to buy, and uh, he came up with it. I couldn't believe somebody came up to the desk with that record, and uh, I just said, I told Clint, I was like, oh, sorry, that record wasn't really supposed to be out there, and uh, <laughs> it's not for sale. <laughs> I totally, he just looked at me like... What? what and I and, I, and I, I said yeah and I was like I'm just kidding man you can get it but wow I can't believe somebody's buying this record I've been waiting to get that one and we wound up hitting it off and we went to see a lot of shit we went to see like Ronald Shannon Jackson and all this stuff out there we went to see me and Clint saw uh, uh, Minuteman open up for Jamal and Dean Takuma at like uh, what was that cafe uh, was like uh, that LA club lingerie or some weird fucking club like uh, Wait, you saw LA. Minute was like, you saw Minute Man Minute Man yes before what Dick Boone f- died he died like a few months later I mean that's Damn, like dude. we were it was sick and uh, so Clint and I met, met there and we had went to see shows and then I wound up leaving California and went to the Artist of Chicago I transferred and I met I wound up it, there I never had played music, but this girl, I was living in her house with her family. This guy was a writer for the Chicago Tribune, and he let me live in the basement with his, his daughter was living. I, was, I don't know. He was a really nice guy. But I wound up jamming with her brother, and he would play regular guitar. And I was really into noise music and no wave at the time, you know? So, like, Ardo Lindsay, I was just like, I don't need to know how to fucking do this. Just <laughs> give me an amplifier, and, you know? And uh, I started doing that, and... Uh, and meanwhile, this kid was, you know, he tried to play. He didn't know what the hell I was doing because he didn't had no any idea, you know. But we had fun, you know, and we would just do that. And uh, so after I wound up hanging with her brother all the time, and then uh, <laughs> after I got out of school there, I, I 
we broke up, you know what I mean? But I've had this bug of playing, you know, music, you know, seriously, because I was like all I did, you know, I got fell in love with that more than this painting shit I was going through at school. And it's that's like, when it I, happened. I was, it it that's happened when it happened. then. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so when I, when her and I broke up and I gra got graduated from school, I was just like, do I go back to California? Because I did love Clint a lot. I just met him, and he was actually getting his art, trying to get his art career together. I met Clint when we, after we did that thing, and I wouldn't sell a record to him. We won all these shows. The first night we hung out, after I wouldn't sell him the record, I think it was like that night, we got all fucked up. We were listening. He was like, he was turning me on to Beef Art and shit. And I, I, I'd known Beef Art, but he really turned me on to like Doc at the radar station. And I was like, oh. and so we're in the middle of this, and I go, hey man, all right, listen, I, I probably should get going. Uh, what are you up? to tomorrow and he's like he's like i gotta take a final uh in geology and i was just like <laughs> what like, and he he wound up flunking out of school because uh, I, I was just like uh, you're taking a final you know like everybody else was freaking out and studying and he was so not into geology he, so he wound up being going like he was inspired by me trying to be an artist so he was like fucking i'm and he flunked out and and but usb felt so highly of him they were like Listen, you just take a break, you know what I mean, and, and figure out what you want to do. Because they didn't want to kick him out because basically he flunked out, but he was such a, you know, he's a good, you know, smart dude, obviously. So uh, they knew he just wasn't into it, but I'll never forget that. We were, wow. you know, I wasn't selling the record in that later that night. I'm like, <laughs> we're getting fucked up listening to Beef Art. He's like, yeah, I got a final tomorrow. I was just like, dude. <laughs> so anyway I, I did want to go back to california i wound up coming back to, uh, come, like i moved back to here my brother was going to art school i talked him into going to art school he was going to art school in philly and i came basically i was like i'm coming back to philly i went first i stayed in ocean city for like six months and then i moved to philly he was up here and i was like but i call i remember talking i was like john i'm playing guitar with this kid it's so much fun we, i'm coming back to philly you we, let's get some guitars and just start fucking around and uh, actually i got a bass i was like i'm gonna get a bass you get a guitar so i did that i came back here we moved into this apartment in philly and we just started jamming you know like but we didn't know how to tune we didn't know how to do anything we were just <laughs> completely just doing this a anti music music thing so cool and, uh, dedicated we all that's all we did we were having so much fun doing it i told clint and he was like getting out of usb and he was like i gotta apply to school so i was like you know, hey, John, I'm in Philly with my brother and we're doing this music thing. And Clint and I got together because of music. He was like, you're kidding me. You know, he's like, so he was like, all right, I want to try to come out, out east, you know, and, and go to school. So meanwhile, John and I are playing. We wound up talking. He was going to the Academy of Fine Arts. And we got, you know, of course, there were guys there who could play. And one a drummer and a, and, a, and his friend was crazy dude, was a guitar player. And uh, he would come over and me and my brother and these guys would just be doing noise. And this was like months and months. We were just getting together once or twice a week, you know, doing this, like having a ball. And uh, and the one kid that he played, he was play. He actually was kind of like that girl's brother that I was going out with Chicago. He knew how to play, and he would have fun watching us just like going off, you know. But he finally grabbed me one time. And was just like, dude, you should just learn how to play. You guys are doing this so much, and he talked me into learning how to play a few chords, bar chords, and and uh, and tune the guitars, and I. I talked Clint and John into it. Clint and my, me, you know, he wound up getting to go to school at, in, uh, at Rutgers in, uh, in uh, Jersey. And he would come down every weekend, every other weekend and play with us, you know. And, and I love the idea that, 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 that you had to talk your bandmates into tuning the, into <laughs> tuning the were, guitars I, and playing when chords. When this guy told me to do it, I was like, no way, man. We are yeah. selling <laughs> out. Yeah, I, we're not going to sell. The no sell out. Yeah. No and, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget it. He talked me into doing it. He was like, it's just going to take five minutes. Let me just show you this. You know what I mean? And he just showed me how to tune and play a chord. And I was, I was like, fuck. And I, I just took to it. You know what I mean? I was like, you liked oh it. Yeah, that, that, that's, how did it feel? That's what I was going to say. I, like, 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 what did that feel like? We had like? been playing, basically learning ways to play in a key together, even though none of us knew how to tune or anything. So we would just do these repetitive can, like can was our hero in Velvets. But it was like, we, Velvets were almost too musical. Can was more like this kind of noise. But it was like, we were ba drones, you know, we're basically doing, you know, we had our distortion pedals, but we... We had the shittiest equipment. It was hilarious, but like, we were just going off. We, we loved it. We did it for you know. People would actually come over to watch us, you know, <laughs> do what we were doing. This kid taught me how to play, and I loved it. And I, after I was resisted, but it was so funny when I told Clint and John, like, "Come on, you guys, let me just show you horrified. how to do this." They were. 
horrible. <laughs> they were so fun. I'll never forget it. They were thought I was such a dick. I was like, no, come on. And uh, dude, after we, I t- like showed them, and me, this guy Brian was helping do it. We had tunes like almost instantly. We were making up songs. Oh. Like it was just like we went from being complete noise improv sound thing to having like e you know e a c d songs you know like uh and uh it was wild it was wild we just took to it it took to we took to it fast it wasn't like we had that intimidating learning how to play the guitar thing we just saw we could see in how the tunings how we were uh, the way we were already fucking around anyway and it just was like not intimidating and we all just like i was like we were instantly playing songs it was crazy I think you know part of the, the the freshness of the sound. I mean, is because it sounds like people doing it f- for the first time. There's no it's mm-hmm. utterly cliche free, you know, like exactly. like and and, and, and w- with tons of intention. You're so. It's exactly right on. It's exactly right on because when I I after we were doing that for after like six months and we had these songs, I was like, fuck, I'm gonna send these a tape out to some some places like you know kyber pass you know and uh it was like i was just I, I, they were just like no nah, i don't know and i was like yeah i think we're doing some good stuff i'm gonna do it and i sent it like tapes i sent it one to the kyber i sent one to the knitting factory because like a knitting factory you know it's the original place where and it was like it was so weird uh like like I called the Kyra a couple weeks later, and uh, I was just like, "Hey, I sent a tape in my band, you know. I was just wondering if anybody listened to it." And it was, I, the guy at the Kyra was just like, "I think it was Dave Frank," and, it, and he was just like, "Listen, uh, okay, appreciate you sent tape in. You want to play, but listen, if we like your tape, you know, we'll let you know. You know, we'll give you a call back and let you know, okay?" And I was like, "Oh." Oh shit! I'm sorry, and I was like, but I had already said Bardo Pond. He was like, all right, well, what's the name of the band? I was like, Bar- Bardo Pond, and he's like, and he's like, okay, Bardo Pond. Yeah, well, you know, we'll check, look around for it. And I was like, oh, wait, hold on. And like somebody in behind him was like, what? What they say? You know, and I could hear, and he like, heard a muffled thing, and he's like, he gets back on. He's like, you know what? We did get your tape, and we actually liked your tape. You know, <laughs> and he was like, we want you to play a show. And I was like, oh my god, really? Yeah, thanks, man. That's cool. I'm glad. And he's like, so cool. yeah, we want you to guys open up for Smog and Royal Trucks. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I was just, just like, dude, those were like Smog, and I just was loving Smog's first record. Yeah, it's so and Royal good, yeah. Trucks was like the god, god you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the, yeah. like Twin Infinitives was just like all yeah, we listened god. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like. I, I'll never forget it, you know. And That's then when I told so Clint cool. and John, they were just like, <laughs> "What?" And, and so suddenly we, you know, went from just we were opening up for those guys, man. It was crazy. Did you have a drummer at this point? Uh, so, so that at that point, right? It was wild. So the guy when Brian showed us how to play, we were playing for a little while, and then. Uh, Joe kind of showed up in the middle, of, uh, like at the end of that period, right be- right when we started making. Joe was a huge part of why, like the songs came together so fast. Because the dude that was playing with us when we were just a noise, freak out outfit, he kind of quit, and, and uh, he was our first drummer to quit on us. And uh, and I put a, a flyer in the um, in the record store here, Third Street Jazz, and uh, uh, and it just like listed, you know, like half Japanese. Dead Sea, uh, you know, all these weird fucking bands. And, and Joe was the only guy that responded to the ad, uh, the flyer I put up in the record store, man. I'd the love lone to see person. flyer, half Japanese in the Dead Sea. That's like, <laughs> it was like, that's hard. Be like. Hard. It was like <laughs> 10 bands that were just so weird. And, <laughs> yeah. and so Joe came in and actually, he, you know, he had a, brilliant way of like sharpening the tune like we would be like here's this tune and he you know he man it was sick it was like suddenly we were bad that's the tape i sent out to to the kyber and shit it was like when he first started with us Mm. yeah it was wild it was wild juxtaposition when we were just kind of playing noise once a week or twice a week to joe coming in and actually making songs up what years what years is this this was like 91 you know 91 uh and then because the first show of the kyber was 92 and uh yeah so it was like you know 90 at 90 89 90 we were just playing like 
straight noise, uh, improv and noise. And then that Brian talked us into playing it. For, so for like six months, we started actually playing songs. And that's when, then it, then Bob quit. We made our first seven inch that came out on uh, on a compulsive. Brian Dilworth put it out. And uh, that was with the first drummer. That That's the only recorded thing with that first drummer. And uh, then Joe came in. And we made up a lot more songs, and uh, I sent the tape to the Knitting Factory and to the to the Kyber, and Kyber came. And then the Knitting Factory, dude, two, like a few weeks later, uh, I they called me, and they uh, the Defunct was playing a big weekend. Defunct, remember that band Defunct? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. They were wild, like, like yeah, yeah. Uh, no. They were like they, such a they, thing. Yeah. They were a thing, you know. It was like Joe Bowie, Lester Bowie's brother, and uh, yeah, like they were the last no wave kind of big thing. And they they had canceled this big blowout weekend they had it, and so these two they let these two intern guys. One was Tom Windish, you know, Tom <laughs> Windish. He be yeah, the, the guy booking agent too. Like yeah, the came giant booking big agent. Time. Yeah, he does still does ass and mothers. Him and this other girl. They gave them the weekend, and they had listened to our tape, and they put together the show. We played a gig. Oh, they got us a gig with us, Low, like Low when they first came out. So we played with Low, and uh, it was um, uh, what the, you remember that band, Bitch Magnet? Um, yeah, like yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, that Jonathan or whatever that guy's name was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He had yeah, a new John thing, Klein. and we played with his uh, band. And, uh, Vineland. And, uh, yes, exactly, yeah. Vineland, yeah. and. Uh, and uh, it was wild. So we got the show at the Knitting Factory, and and uh, it that's was when it was like, on Houston. That that, yes, that was when, when it was, was on Houston. Yes, the yeah. Houston one. Yeah, dude, I saw Sonny Chirac there. Sick. Yeah, dude, insane. Like, I guess I was in college. It was like '88 <sighs> or something like that. I never yeah. saw Sonny, man. I I, well, I wanted to see like Last Exit, you know, or Sun. Anything with Sonny would have been insane. I think wow, there's a video. Of the, there's a video of the show that I saw. Oh, cool! Actually. Yeah, is it Sonny's really, band? Um, Sonny Chirac band? Yeah, like, yeah, it's sick, and and it's like two camera. It looks really good. If you look up Sonny Chirac, I, I can't wait. Movie, I'll check factory, it out. It, it pops up. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen that. Fucking oof. shit! <laughs> it freaked me out. <laughs> it was awesome. I always loved that he did the tune like uh, for you know Space Goes Coast to Coast. Like that's the Sonny Chirac that the intro the the song that intros that show every time is Sonny Chirac. I don't is know. Is it really how those guys? Really? Yes. Whoa. That's so that's sick. <laughs> oh. oh, right. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's Sonny Chirac. That's fucked. In short order, so so your dreams come true right away, <laughs> right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was weird. It was like, and then you know we were so happy to get on uh, records like with Drunken Fish and, and like it was like immediately as soon as uh, we got the, the gigs and the shows, I that same uh, same jam tape I sent to the Your Flesh magazine uh, uh, was like you know Your Flesh you know that dude he's so, it's such mm -hmm. a great yeah uh, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, those guys, he put, uh, Mike Trushan did a review of our cassette, that first cassette. Actually, the, the first cassette I ever sent out was just to them, and uh, and they are the only people that reviewed that thing. I did send a cassette out to a couple, just a, like that, mostly because that magazine, I like, that, that, that zine. And uh, those guys reviewed it. So from there, like, like uh, Brian here already liked this, and he compulsively put our first record out. But the guy who read our review in that magazine, Brian, uh, Darren from Drunken Fish, wound up, he wanted to put an album out. So suddenly, like, dudes wanted to put out seven inches an album. So and we sick. were playing the Kyber, and, 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 you know what I mean? Within, like, a year. Crazy. It was wild. And then within that next year was, like, Darren put the record out, Brian put the record out, and then... Gerard would call me once in a while. Gerard would call me yeah. to put to <laughs> ask us if we wanted to play a show somewhere, you know. And it was like I forget the first one was like, oh, the guy from Homestead Records. You remember Homestead Records? Yeah, of course. They were, yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah. that was Gerard's was label. Gerard. But then, yeah. but, yes, and then, that but, was Gerard's but, label. After Gerard left Homestead, and went to right. Uh, it was uh, Steve, Ken? I think his name was, or some. It, 
But like they 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 had a show and, and Gerard got us on the show and I remember him the guy from the who was like all homestead guys and then he went to Gerard got us on that show, and it was like William Hooker was there. It was really cool like William crazy. Hooker and and uh, I, we played went up and played that. Then Gerard called us and we played another show. And then after that he was like he was like hey we're we're thinking of asking you guys to be on Matador. I think we opened up for Dirty Three or something. How did the uh... How did the 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 ten inch with the uh, um, Mogwai happen? Well, Mogwai was, you know, we were tight. Mogwai loved us, and uh, we loved those guys. They were they were they, you know, they liked us one day. As soon as they got on Matador, they got in touch with us, and uh, we did that tour together. And then they they asked that was their idea, like, hey, let's do it, you know, for the tour, set ten inch, you know, split ten inch record. Was there any conceptual jibber jabber? between the two I, guys? I, 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 no, there wasn't, no. We just, like, they just said, you do your side, we'll do our side. I think we, I think we got, I think we got influenced by, by a little, that one tune that we put on that thing, I think it's kind of a mogwai kind of tune. Did, but, did, uh, did that come out know. before or after that tour you did? Was it after? Uh, I think it was during was the it? tour. It was during the tour? Yeah. Yeah, it was for the tour. We sold it on those the Those guys, tour. those guys came up and recorded at Dave Friedman's, you know, out in right. Fredonia. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, one one afternoon, uh, the bug jar owners, Bob Duke, I don't know if you remember him, Big Bob, he calls us us. He's like, hey, you guys want to open up for Mogwai like tomorrow night? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, they just need a break from recording and they want to come out and play the bug jar. <laughs> so, That's so cool. They, they came out and they had like five full stacks oh, you know, yeah. in that room. Yeah. Yeah, in that room. Holy shit. Yeah. That's so And like, gnarly. you know, a, a lot of people in town didn't know who they were, even though they were they were on all these magazines at the time. Um, but our town, you know, obsessed with. So Toronto. was that Hilka that played with them? <laughs> yeah, Hilka. Yeah, oh, we cool. opened up for them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, super loud. Yeah, crazy. They were a lot of fun, though. But. I just saw Stuart this summer. Oh, man, I love that yeah. guy. Yeah, man, he's he's great he's so chill it's it, you know it's interesting when you know somebody for a really long time and you knew them when when he, i mean he was so fucking young right he was like so young he, yeah um so young he, he's so chill so and, chill and, and and he's so it's it's fun he's exactly the same except for the, that he's really chill <laughs> you know yeah. Like, yeah yeah i uh, those guys they really I, I was so much fun we toured with them like all in europe and we did a big tour and then you know i with them that's so cool that was been in more s- that was that's sick i didn't know that oh I yeah mean. oh yeah we had so much fun yeah like and that's and that that's so that was like big venues and shit yes and, awesome. they, and you know it was like i don't, I don't know we were I, I, we were always kind of like when we came out man like uh, we didn't really get to play that many shows opening up for big acts. Like we kind of did a lot of shows. Like we were right away headliner. We didn't get to like play, and I, we always wanted to do that. Like with Pavement or Sonic Youth or something. They those guys didn't. Sonic Youth asked us later on too, but like so we just kind of didn't get that like you know an introduction to like bigger rooms by opening up for some bands. It was like we did some in Philadelphia, but we never got really asked to go do some shows like that and tour with a band that was you know you know and, and make the. 500 bucks or whatever a night over right. for these huge shows you know but uh those guys hooked us up like you know and i'll ask us almost like every every tour they were trying to do if we could do it and we would do it if we could and we and if we could that's we so but, cool and yeah like Stuart and and uh dom i love dom barry too, man. Like, and barry, <laughs> barry. yes uh it, yeah that, so much fun that was like touring with you guys you know what i mean it was just like yeah. with the, the best dudes you know yeah, how did you uh, how did you guys hook up with Isabel? Like when did that happen? Isabel was one of the people that was at John's school that would come over and jam with us when we oh, were okay. just like, you know like doing these crazy jams. You know we had a big living room and then, and some of those guys would come over and she was somebody who came over and uh, I I think she we I I forget how exactly I think she just started. Like, she just started playing with us, you know, we were just like, you know, especially when we started to learn how to play tunes, she just kind of was like coming in, she would do background vocals um, on like, and like Clint was singing at very, at in the very beginning, and then Isabel would do some background vocals, and then she wound up doing a lot of vocals, and, and when she, when she said she knew how to play the flute, it was just like... Yeah, let's give that a try. Like that, and that really just made our whole identity. Really, it was just like for sure. When right. She started doing, it, you know, it was like, 
I, I'll never forget that. That was like, she was so amazing anyway. And then she was like, oh, I played the flute. And we said, yeah, let's give that a try. And I'll never forget the first jam was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is insane, you know? It was just so, I ne- it was so out of left field, you know? Like, we never even, you know? And she was so, she's such a good improviser. And, like, she's had, like, such a great feel. She just went right in, even though we were playing, like, this wild, you know, loud shit. And um, she just, uh, Clint wound up, Clint wound up bailing on us. He, he right when shit was really ha- starting to happen out of nowhere, he decided that he wanted to move to Seattle. And I'm like, dude, I never forget. I'm like, dro- I had to drop him off of the train. I'm like, I'm like, you're, you're you're moving to Seattle with this chick that you just met. And he's just like, yeah. And I'm like, and he was like, well, what what do you want to do, man? Like, go on tour and stuff. And I was like, like yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. we've been doing this for two years dude what are you talking about I mean, it's happening and he bailed and uh so that was like isabel had been doing and was like isabel would you like to be our singer we're going to keep going clint's leaving so and funny. she was like yeah sure i'll give it a shot you know it was like it was a godsend really you know and i yeah. and because i was playing bass and i just was like as soon as he, at John and I were making up a lot of the songs. I, I was playing guitar with them, and even, and then I would kind of go to my bass after, like we'd make up the song. I'd show Clint, like we'd show Clint the chords and stuff. And uh, as soon as he quit, I was just like, I'm playing guitar. And we had seen Trucks when we opened for Trucks that night. They didn't have a bass player, and it was just the drummer, and and uh, and, and and Nick and. Uh, jennifer and it was like no bass and they just sounded fucking insane i was like we don't need a bass so like john we're just playing guitars and so we did that for a while and joe was the drummer it was like it was insane it was insane and then clint comes back clint came back and every time i talked to him <laughs> this was like so he left this is when the album things happened and i was like he left and then I was like, I remember I talked to him like one month. We talked to each other like once a month. You know, he's like, he's out there. And he couldn't find a fucking job. It was like there were no <laughs> jobs out there. Like he had to work in a photo fucking booth. <laughs> he was so miserable. And of it was course. so every, but he, meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We, so we're doing the seven inch. And uh, this, yeah, he left. He was not even on the first seven inches. He's not on the second one. And, uh, <laughs> you know, every time I talk, I was like, yeah, we're doing seven inches. And then, and then it was like a month later. Yeah, you know, this guy's did the seven inch. They want to do an album. We're going to do an album with these guys. <laughs> he was just like, and I think the third time when I told him we had another album, he was like, God, it's not working out out here, guys. I really <laughs> want to come back. But it took him like another six months to actually come back. And it was just so funny. And it was like, I was like, all right, come on back. And, and I was like, I'm not playing, I'm not playing guitar. I mean, I'm playing guitar. You're playing bass. That's how we wound up playing bass. He was a dude. He's a great guitar player. He should. Be I bet. I mean, he's he's he's, uh, you know, his feel is insane. I could totally it's imagine insane. being exactly. incredible on guitar. And he yeah. was when it was John and him playing guitar and playing. I didn't. I love playing bass. You know what I mean? Because those two yeah, me too. sounded fucking insane. You know, it was like. But, I didn't need to play. I basically, and I just stole from both of those guys when I wound up finally just being playing guitar. But it was like, he he came back in. He was like, all right, I'll play fucking bass, you know. But it was like, <laughs> it was like we both, dude. I wanted to say when we it was just me and Joe and John and Isabel. We were like a song factory, man. It was Damn. just like, oh my god, we had such a feel together, and we could just throw anything like the whole booth of Arius, like. Clint's not on it. That's just me, Joe, John, you know. That's the record that that was my way in. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's just yeah. no bass. That's just like us. Hey, Clint's on Amen, the last tune. When he came back before <laughs> the, 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 the reissue came out with the CD. Well, not the reissue, but a CD version. He came on it and got on that last tune, a 20-minute Amen song. But uh, the original LP is just no bass, you know. And I swear it was wild. It was like me and John and Joe could just like fucking make up tunes <laughs> like instantly to making tunes like we had so much to show clint when he finally came back and you know joined us it was like kind of like you know oh shit now we got to show this dude like all these tunes and he was learning the bass kind of he was more of a guitar guy and he hadn't played for the whole year he was in seattle but i love his bass play- i mean again his style was also similarly you know just like doing everything for the first time exactly right you know, like, oh, like no, the, the it's like yeah. he was a better bass player than I was. You know, what I, mean? I, he I mean, it's he's so ill. I mean, he made such what, what did he, did he have a specific bass? Why do I remember 
what, what he played what kind that of uh he got that sg bass you know SG early bass. on he played right, it right. for before that he, i think with you he was playing uh Dan Electro bass. Did he have a Longhorn bass weird... or something like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he was yeah, playing right. that on that tour. He yeah. had that for a little while, and yeah. uh, then he's he got still playing a Dan Electro bass. too. I Is think. he? Sick. He still got that. Yeah, I know he still got. Yeah, it. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, have you seen the Bitter Wish or? Double I have Wig not seen Bitter stuff? Wish yet. I keep fucking missing him. Is he it's, playing a Dan Electro with that? It's a f- yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Dan Electro, and he plays this like weird mini orange stack. It's like a mini oh, stack. Yeah. Loud yeah, as yeah, shit. Got, yeah, he yeah. Gets just incredible sounds out of that. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever he's, pedals. Uh, yeah. Like, everyone just stands there going, what the hell is he doing? Like, he's he doesn't so need nice. anything it's else. It's confounding. Yeah. The thing with him, he's so good. Like, I swear, when he would sing, he was insane. Like, he's a yeah. great singer, too. You know, yeah. like, you never can re- really hear him. But even just, like, when you, when he's got, like, not that much volume, he's a very good singer. And, uh, like, when he left us, it broke our fucking hearts. Like, luckily, Isabel was in the wings at the same time because otherwise we were devastated you know what i mean like because mm-hmm. he was like the whole vision was him being the singer you know guitar right. player and uh wow. lo- it was insane that we were so proud actually that we could keep going you know what i mean after he was like um I'm going it's to it's it, you know? it's cool that you kept on having all of these like total like huge upheavals you know like like like, unrolling with it and of course it makes sense because where you came from in the first place with the approach and stuff that 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 you could keep rolling (laughs) with it you know we were ready for it yeah 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 and when it finally did gel when yeah like you're saying when he finally did can we we, like amanita you know was him on bass you know and and it was just insane you know like when he finally gelled with the bass and we had the new i was a guitar Thanks, yeah, the, yeah, it was so yeah, fun. yeah, man. We're, we're, I was rocking the shit out of that last night. It sounded so. It sounded really good, actually. That that I, you know, I just I just pulled it up online and the fucking remaster or whatever. It sounded pretty goddamn great. I gotta say, real good depth. Thanks, you man. Know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah there was, that one was recorded in that in that studio with Jason Cox and. It's a motherfucker, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like definitely our, our biggest wildest sound. And he did great on Laps, too. Like Laps was like the recording of Laps. But, I mean, I like all the other stuff, too. But, like, we were, you know, that was, like, Almanid is, like, half, like, it, one-inch tape. We did a, like, that was one-inch right? tape. Like, yeah. And and Laps was half-inch tape. And then, like, everything else, I think, uh, like, set and setting is, um, ADAT, you know, I bought the ADATs, so we, were, you know, we were just recording everything and had ADATs, and I, I always liked the ADAT sound, but, I mean, it's still, it's not, you know, it's not like one inch tape, you know, like analog tape. Did would you? How'd you guys record uh, the hard quartet? We just went into the box, you know, with just computer. Um, I don't, I don't think we had any. T- uh, you guys, you guys should fuck we, around with some tape because I, I, it sounds great. I love the sound of the record. There's, there's some yeah. tape, but not a lot. Like Daniel Schlett, who's really cool, who's, who's the engineer that I always work with and and brought to make that record. You know, he cooks some stuff on a little tape reel. He'll do that uh-huh. thing. Yep. And maybe we had, s- I, I should, t- I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Okay. But, 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 but largely it was standard you know modern style but 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 you know live and again this guy daniel is like a rudy van gelder freak and so he's like oh cool he's really really good with making a room sound sick you know nice. and and that's and it sounds and incredible so, yeah 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 thanks yeah, um but but that's super th- this guy daniel schlett that that was his that, that that's that's his touch but and then he nice kind of normally his thing is that he'll, he has an interesting vocal chain that he does like he really like kind of does he's he gets these he's really good at making a voice jump out of the speakers and stuff and then okay. that got and then that approach got extremely tweaked by emmett kelly because emmett's a he's from a whole crazy or sound school and stuff like that so so it was so we mixed it me and emmett sort of sat there for the mix and Emmett really did lots of cool scooping and stuff with the with the yeah you can yeah it's so. beautiful yeah yeah thanks it's really really cool I don't know what the reaction has been but it's just like holy shit it's there, really yeah, like, I, I, I needed that thank you so much you know uh, yeah. there hasn't there, it's, um, we're just that, seriously like one of the fir- first friends who's who I've gotten to talk to about it really like so it's it's just starting to because I think it comes out this week and stuff so so that awesome that's fucking amazing I'm uh, blown away. Thank yo, you. Dude, you got no it's uh 
I love Steve and I love payment, man. But like hearing him with you guys doing that is a whole new le level of phase or what, you know, it's just so heavy and like, it's so pop, but like so heavy. I love it, man. It's just like, I'm so psyched. You know, great. I'm so psyched because like, transferring into Bardo Pine, I, 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 it's when Chris mentioned the idea of doing that show, I thought it was such a, a, a an astute idea just because yeah. of the of the way that your drums work, you know? Yeah. I mean? And it also occurred to me that, like, what an impact I think you guys had on all of us in, in Chavez from, from playing shows with you and stuff. This, that was like, fun, the, that tour, yeah. That was sick, You dude. guys had a great, you guys had a big influence on us too, man, absolutely. Oh, that's cool, man, thanks. Oh my so, God, yeah. yeah. We gotta, like, like, we gotta tighten up our shit, man. This is <laughs> Sonic, we gotta, get, it was so, it was, Sorry, <laughs> we were like, yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, it's funny. That's why you say that. Thank you. That's so yeah, funny. yeah. And and it was cool because I remember at the time, you know, because it's like we had a sound that I, I think, you know, there there are bands I think that had similar sonics to us and stuff, and maybe similar approaches to guitars. And I don't think any of the bands were particularly listening to each other, but that I, I was aware. And then I was so drawn to like your guys' sound, which, I, which, you know, like, like I think that we had a lot in common, but I think maybe on, on the surface, maybe other people wouldn't think so, or maybe because of aesthetics, or I don't know what. Um, but, like, uh, the the drum vibe, what the fuck, dude? It's so sick. Like, like uh, Joe was amazing to play with. I mean, I loved Ed, too, after him, and Jason after yeah. him, but, like, Joe was a wild dude to play with. He really was. Re he was, uh, he has a singular uh, way of playing that's... Uh, well, just like I could throw any, I always had like the weird like kind of tunes, the weird juxtapositions I would throw at these guys, and and he would he was like of all the guys I ever threw any kind of weird timings with, uh, he always was like game. He would just go, he would just go, oh, okay, yeah, and then he would just do it, and I'd be like, holy shit! Like he just, you know, I like everybody else after that. There would be a certain tune I would try to play with them, and they just couldn't get the way I would do whatever it was I do. You know the what I mean? It was just yeah, like, yeah. But Joe was so loose and, and tight at the same time. He would just, he could just figure out, he would tell me what, what the signature or I was doing or whatever the timing was. And I'd be like, Oh yeah. Okay. You know, I had no idea what he was talking about, but he, was like, <laughs> he would just suddenly play it perfectly with me. And it was like, I never had that again, man. I never had that like again. I mean, I no, had guys I, do a lot of great stuff, but like he was did amazing. Did he have a background in jazz or something or? I always, be, right? I always describe him as playing loose and sort of behind people. Like he kind of played a little behind, right? And it felt loose, but he totally knew what he was doing. But then he yeah. had these he had these stagger snare things, you know? Totally. Like and they were yes. and it was so cool. And, and actually it's the only other drummer that I could think of who is in this and they're they're both on their own planets, but but I feel like these these guys rhyme with rhyme with each other a little bit as Jim White, you know what I mean? The way that yeah, you know, it's that it's the same thing where he just makes it so much. It's Absolutely. really unique, you know, like like yes. like and and holds it and stuff. And so I I, I was thinking about you guys when, when we started doing the band and stuff because I was that's just like, cool. Yeah, thanks, man. That's I'll tell Joe that that's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's that is really cool. Yeah, yeah, he, he, and, and, yeah, yeah. You're right. Jim Way is a good. Yeah, it's another guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, where where, where yeah. he just where, where all of a sudden every second matters in this different way. You know yeah, exactly. I mean? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. always got a. Yeah, he was so wild, and his timing is weird because like he would. I would think you know you'd be like one you know hit, hit like on the beat, but he would he would kind of do this loopy loop kind of thing, you know, and then meet me later right at the perfect time with this like you know. Uh, hey, really cool dude. Yeah, it, it also drove too. I just also like yes. that there's a momentum to it, just like a motherfucker. Totally, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, he. Uh, yeah, he. Yeah, he did it all. It was amazing. I loved like he. I fucking broke my heart when he was like I had to. He had to go. You know, he had the fucking family. Sorry for my French, and I love his family, <laughs> his kids. But like, he had his kids, and and uh, it was like he had to pursue his. You know, he was a, a PhD with uh, his chemistry you know chemical yeah. engineering I and mean, i would I, I was in a you know i'd be in the car we'd be driving to the next gig and i would just look over and he'd be sitting in the passenger seat and he'd be like he had this fucking uh formula that was like four pages long you know and he was he was just doing this formula and i would look over like what oh my god man that's insane are you doing that right now and he would be just you know with all this shit from a it's, and he was our drummer, you know. It was just like holy well, shit. But then again, so and so, you know, 
Chavez and Bart upon went on tour, and we our drummer is the same deal. He's this raging genius. Do you know? Did oh, you yeah. know this about James Lowe? Like, so James Lowe. Oh right, like, yeah, James. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so so same deal. Like James Lowe, like helps design like stents and and right. and like and like hardware systems. Computer hardware and 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 computer systems for like Merrill Lynch, like always different things. Like create, he's like a high level That's tech insane. problem I didn't know solver. That. Yeah, I man. remember you saying that about him back then, but I forgot that he was another one, another science. Yes, guy. no, dude, like who are just like a, an absolutely advanced human. Like, 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 like you're like, yeah. Well, yeah. some people are, are smarter, more talented, and just like live or better at life than other people. You know, it's like James Lowe is one of those dudes. Like. Just How's so he doing, advanced. man? Is he playing the skins still? He's not. Show? He's he ain't playing. He's so funny, dude. The reason that Chavez stopped was because he, he's like, I I just don't want to do it, you know. Like, Fuck, like he was real, so insane. I know, and 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 he's like, he's like, it's just too much. It's so much work, and and he's like, and in order to do it the way that I want to do it, I gotta yeah. fucking work so hard, or else it's miserable. I have to do it this way, and and he was like, it's not fucking worth it he's like i don't wow. have enough time for it is that wild yeah yeah and like we ha we had so many you know we begged and we wanted to do, do another record and all this shit and he was just like no you know and th and then it was for years this ongoing we'd get back to the get to, we'd convince him beg him like dude we could play like this huge you know bunch of huge festivals we'll we'll come home with like money in our pockets he's like okay you know and then he'd be like but that's it and then at the end we'd be like so you want to do more he's like no i said no oh, i don't God. yeah <laughs> like, like like and he, he he finally finishes like look I love hanging out with you guys let's just I'd much rather have a drink with you guys than play with you guys I mean like or just hang out like like oh my god yeah. I know is that gnarly Jesus I know and you guys you were just like I never thought of even you couldn't really get another drummer it's just like no way no you can't do it yeah no, no. Yeah, like like, like not, not with that band you really couldn't no. you know what yeah. I mean? it, 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 like, like, like it just it's he's part of the thing you I, know? Shit, when Joe had to split man I mean I was like I, I, I wanted I, we had to keep going but it was like I almost was like yeah fuck it that's over you know but just so funny i mean when, set and setting was a good example when we played that what that record was the record that joe bailed on it had to bail on us right right ed actually joe couldn't play one night we were at the kyber pass playing a gig and at the last second he canceled like he couldn't play and we didn't know this until we like loaded all our stuff in and he's like you guys oh, i'm not going to be there so ed <laughs> ed farnsworth was the bar back you know at the at the kyber and it was like uh, he heard us t we're talking about it and he's like hey man I'll, I'll sit in with you guys you know and it was like all right i was just was like yeah we're gonna play this riff and you just you know i'll tell you what just come in whenever and uh he came in he, it was so different than joe it was like he just came in very strong and like you know hammering right. this you know it wasn't like he didn't slide in into the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, bam <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of like a refreshing in a way and so when yeah, for joe sure. finally quit we were, we were like ed how about you just be our drummer because we were you know we, he's the only other guy we played with so and he sounded we had fun that night so uh, yeah. michael did you know did you know ed already like as a drummer and was he doing Astable we, we knew him from or? playing shows at the kyber really he was like he was like a bartender barback guy at, you know that we always say hey what's going on and he'd help us kind of you know help us load in and stuff and i i knew he was a drummer when a couple of bands in the city i didn't i hadn't really seen many of them i mean at this point that was like when we just started out and we were kind of like at home playing we would go to shows but we were almost like i just kind of getting into the philadelphia scene i had just moved here for like a year and so and john and i were we were just playing and stuff we we would go out and see a few bands that we knew in the city but we were both kind of new to philly uh so we didn't really you know know ed that well you know we barely knew him and uh but he was there that night and it was like kelsey he was like i'll sit in and uh i forget i guess the kyber had a back you know 
a, a, a drum set there and so he I don't yeah because we didn't have Joe's drum so he must have just like got it you know got the drum set that they had the extra drum set at the club and just play you know he played it, it was, like saved us it was it was pretty wild it was pretty wild you know what I mean when we pulled it off we played basically our tunes I mean at that point our tunes were kind of like one riff over and over so it wasn't like he had to you know do any kind of fancy stuff but it was just like <laughs> he you know he just pulled it off you know it was like all right then when Joe Joe after that Joe ironically got less and less available you know and 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 finally it was just like I know I can't do this anymore and then we were like hey well, what about that guy we played with that you know that wild night at the Kyber and 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 <laughs> He came in and it was great. Did Ed create a different template for how your songs would go? He, he was like, it, he did, he did. Cause he just kind of, he was more motoric, you know what I mean? He had a more kind of motoric sound. Like Joe was flow, would flow, you know, he would, yeah, yeah. he could change a fucking riff. You know what I mean? Like he could come in and play the riff and just suddenly do that thing you were talking about with the snare and just like completely double tempo it. it or something yeah. and recontextualize the riff. And it would just yeah. send us into this, like, uh, it, it was so much part of what we did because we would do that with, you know, distortion pedals and, and, you know, and just like adding distortion levels and levels of volume. He would just like change the way he played and just double time it. Whereas a lot of guys just kind of play the same kind of through whatever you're doing with your guitars, you know what I mean? Right. He would really yeah, yeah. react and see and kind of anticipate where we were going. And uh, it, it, it was wild with Joe. You know, he, he, he would change tunes, you know what I mean? In a way that other drummers are great, but like, like they don't actually literally physically affect how you're, you know, thinking about a song in a way. Totally. You know, Joe, totally. He would do that. So, but Ed was just so solid. It was kind of refre fun in a way to just kind of get more minimal and just like, you know, feel the grooves in, in that way without uh, having a, like almost like a jazzy, jazz, not like jazz, like rock jazz flourishes, you know, like I, I'm a sucker for fusion shit. So like, it was like <laughs> Joe's ability to do that was so wild, but Ed was definitely a rock drummer. So when he came in, the tunes kind of got more rock, you know what I mean? And we went heavier kind of rock way, you know? Cause it was just, it just flowed that way. And it was kind of, right, right, right. we were into it, you know? And then when it was, when did, J did Jason, were Jason and Ed in together for a second or, or how no, did the Jason Ed, think? Ed, broke our hearts again you know years later <laughs> and, you know it was just like the, you know he was like i forget why he wanted to i think it was a lot being in bardo pond man it was kind of like finally it was just like okay, sorry i can't deal like, and then there was a guy michael zangi who wind up playing drums with um kurt kurt a vial and the violators on the first couple records and he was drumming with us and we love that guy we actually had a volume nine it came out on fire records last year and it's oh, just cool. that guy the period that we played with him it's pretty cool it's like it's sick it's, i'll have to get one to you i'll get one yeah too. yeah I'd love and, that. Uh, and you too joe i don't know if you heard that stuff i but, got it um yeah cool <laughs> i always say that I have three favorite bands, Bardo Pond, The Dead Sea, and Lauren Connors. Amazing. Wow. And then when I talk about Bardo Pond, I'm always getting shit wrong, too. <laughs> um, like, I'll forget that there's records without Clint. I didn't know Clint played guitar first, and you played bass. Yeah. He was <laughs> um, my guitar hero, man. And then, guy. like, certain records, especially when the reissues started coming out. Besides my I, bro. Of course, I, I buy them, even though I have the original. Um, I'll... I'll realize, oh shit, there was like the cross, there was a drummer crossover. Like, I, I always thought there were like these very distinct switches between Joe and Ed and Jason. And then when I look at the liner notes, I'm more, I'm really lazy at looking at liner notes now. Like, when I was a kid, I would like, of course, yeah. scour them because I had like 10 records. But now it's like, I can't read <laughs> you it. You got a I lot can't of records back there. Yes. Um, the Bardo section is like that. <laughs> That's so it's sick. It's over here somewhere, right there. Thanks, man. Amazing. Thanks. Wow. over here. Heavy. Um, but it's always fun, like, uh, when Set and Setting came out, it's like the reissue, and I'm, like, actually looking at the liner notes again. I'm like, oh, shit, they both play on this. Yeah. That's <laughs> they, a wild record. It's got two, yeah. two, two different yeah, yeah. guys on it. Yeah. Yeah. Great to see you, man. It's good to see you Dude. guys. Dude. Uh, Made my day. I was, I was, I've been looking forward to this. You know, so fucking stoked. And say what up. Say what up uh, to John and to Isabel, please. I will, I will. Yeah, yeah.